All right, hey guys, um, it's Miss Miss Sprint Cup Page here. Welcome to the Amp Up the 88 live video chat powered by Amp Energy, where each week we ask a member of the 88 team a few questions, and you, the fans, get to submit your questions. If you haven't done so already, log on, send in your questions. We'll make sure we try to get an answer all uh, all your questions you send in. This week we're chatting with Chris Golder, shock specialist. And um, before we start things off, though, I hear you have you just told us some pretty exciting news. Uh, in two weeks, you're going to be a soon to, you're soon to be dad. How yeah. exciting is that? It's very exciting. My uh, wife, uh, Shanna, she's pregnant with our first child. It's going to be a, a boy. He's due November sixth. Mm -hmm. um, I was hoping he would come a little sooner than November sixth because we're going to be in Texas and then Phoenix, mm -hmm. which is going to be real hard to get home from if I get the phone call that the oh, baby's yeah. on the way but when well, it happens it happens yeah, yeah I know and you'll have the whole off season so that's good have y'all thought of any names or anything um that's kind of a tough question right now <laughs> in the household um get you I, in trouble I'm a uh, Chris jr. and I really wanted to name my first born, born son Chris the third uh -huh. and she was okay with it until she got pregnant and now <laughs> now she's she wants to have Chris be the middle name. And uh -huh. She's leaning towards Owen right now. Owen. So we'll see, I guess. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> so I su I suggested, um, well, let's just change my middle name. He can still he can be Christopher <laughs> Owen Golder the third. Mm -hmm. He can still be the third because the first and last name are the same. Yeah. But she's not liking that. So. <laughs> well, congratulations. We'll see. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have to find out from you in a few weeks. Well, um, we're gonna go ahead and start taking some of y'all questions. Norco Cheer Mom is the first question. Decide, describe your job. What exactly do you do on the 88 team? Um, I build the uh, shocks for the car and the uh, bump stops. Um, our uh, weekend starts out usually um, Tuesday or Wednesday. Actually, we'll prepare a few weeks in advance, but Tuesday or Wednesday, um, Lance, the uh, crew chief, and then Chris Doherty and Chris Heroy, the race engineers, and I will all sit down and we'll come up with a uh, game plan for the weekend mm -hmm. about how you want to attack the next racetrack. Um, setup wise, we'll talk about shocks, bump stop packages, which is uh, important areas to me, but we'll also talk about geometries and other parts of the setup that we're going to do that weekend that we think would help Dale and uh, make the car feel better to Dale and I'll suggest shocks and, bu and bump stop packages to complement that okay. set up based off of um, seven post data and driver comments from past races mm -hmm. and track setups. Well, Dale seemed to be pretty happy with his car this past weekend. Y'all yeah. had a great race. We did. <laughs> did he have anything we, to say uh, to y'all? Um, he was really happy with the car all weekend, you know. Um, Friday in practice, um, we unloaded in race trim. We uh, started off with our race setup in practice. We made one race setup. We just wanted to make sure that what we were thinking was going to be good for that weekend felt good to Dale and he was real happy with it. We swapped to qualifying trim and uh, we were we, we were decent in qualifying trim, not spectacular, but Martinsville, Martinsville is a very tough place to qualify well at just because if you make, if somebody makes one slight mistake, whether it mm -hmm. be the driver, the setup, whatever, um, the field from first place, from the person who gets the pole to 20th, is a tenth of a second. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very, very tight window where a tenth of a second at a mile and a half be first place through sixth place. So there's very, very little room for error there. So qualifying didn't go as well as we expected. And then um, Saturday, we, uh, Saturday morning practice, the track was very cool and it hadn't rubbered mm -hmm. up and the car was okay in practice but it was loose and um and we were okay with that it was a good thing nobody panicked you know the car yeah. wasn't stellar but nobody panicked because we knew that hey you either better be you better be loose in that first practice if you're going to be good in the second practice mm -hmm. and then the second practice rolled around which the second practice is very representative of how this car is going to be in race trim and the car was excellent in race trim mm -hmm. we we made a few changes, but I think the track really came to us. And the uh, car was good in race trim. Uh, race started. Um, we, uh, you know, qualified in the high 20s. 
worked our way up through there. Um, with about 150 laps to go, we led mm -hmm. for a good portion of the race, which is real exciting. And then yeah. mm -hmm. the uh, track tightened up a little bit there at the end. We got Dale a little bit too tight. Uh -huh. But came home seventh, yeah. we were happy with that. I know. So many people, were, it was yeah. so good to see y'all running up front. We can't yeah. wait to see it, this weekend. It was really cool to see the fans in the stands. Yeah. They were really excited to see Dale up there leading, I know. leading a good number of laps. <laughs> Everybody was, was on their feet yeah. cheering. I was like, oh gosh. So that was a good, good race for y'all. Um, let's see. Kimmy Form has a question. Do you work only on the 88 car or also on the 5 car? During the uh, race weekend, um, I work on the 88, but all 400 cars work very, very closely together. Um, during the week, we're constantly sharing notes, going to lunch together, talking about what we can do to make the shock packages better for the drivers, talking about what has helped one driver, would that help the next. Um, our seven post testing is a, a team effort with a five and 88, and we also share that information with the 24 and 48. Okay. Um, so during the weekend, it's just the 88, but mm -hmm. we're kind of like one big team. I mean, yeah. during the weekend, we're constantly, hey, I tried shock number one, and it really helped Dale's entry. You know, maybe Jimmy should try that or mm -hmm. Jeff should try that. And a lot of times, they'll have the uh, same feedback. So. Yeah, that's what some of the other guys I've talked to have said. How about y'all are just like a big family here? Yeah. So it's yeah. got to be fun to work here with everybody. Yeah. Um, Shannon Hoopster has a question, wants to know, what type of tools do you have to use? What type of tools? Um, well, I use my computer a lot, mm -hmm. obviously, to do um, to look at um, test data and set up data. To build the shocks, um, there's a lot of specialty tools, taking the shocks apart, putting them together. Um, one of the main things, I guess, actually physical hand tool-wise that people would be familiar with, I use a, a torque wrench a lot to build the shocks to make sure everything's tightened to the right specifications because if you over tighten under under tighten say the shim stack on the shocks it mm -hmm. will change the curve um, I use dial calipers to measure the uh, bump stop gaps and thickness of shims and uh, we get to work with these really cool shock dynos that uh, we can actually go to a test and log how the shock is traveling on the car mm -hmm. at that track we can load that data in the shock dyno and it will simulate that shock. It'll run that shock through those exact uh -huh. motions, exact speeds, and um, see what kind of force that shock is making. Then from there we can punch that in the sim and try to adjust the car per Dale's feedback okay. of what he thinks he needs to go faster. Are you sure you didn't go to Clemson? You sound like a pretty smart guy. Where did you go to school? I went to school <laughs> at uh, Georgia Tech. I won't hold that against you. <laughs> yeah. We, we uh, lost what did, a... What did you uh, major in? I majored in mechanical engineering. Okay. I uh, graduated in 2004. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, we lost a tough football game <laughs> all this weekend. It wasn't too tough for us. Yeah. We got a, <laughs> we've had a relatively, I'm not going to say easy schedule, yeah. but before we got to Clemson, we were 5-2. <laughs> and two. I was really excited about this year. Coach Paul Johnson's really got the team turned around. Uh -huh. Had a great year last year, and... Uh, Came into Clemson, y'all knocked us <laughs> off. Um, we got a tough, we got Virginia Tech and Miami and Duke mm -hmm. and then Georgia at the end of the year, which I have two twin sisters that went to UGA. Aww. They're a year younger than me. Yeah. Big Georgia fans. Yeah. So we That's have gonna the, be a fun rivalry. <laughs> we have the Georgia, uh, Georgia Tech game every mm -hmm. weekend. Thanksgiving weekend, so oh, Thanksgiving's yeah. really Clemson USC. I know house. how that is. Yeah. That kind of you know leads us into our, our next question by Grossy Twenty Five. You said you graduated in, graduated in two thousand four. Yes. Um, wants to know is this your first job in racing? Other than um, working for myself and my father when we were uh, racing short track back in uh, North Georgia, this is my first mm -hmm. real job out on my own. Um, I uh, graduated Georgia Tech in 2004, moved up here, lived out of a hotel for two weeks, mm -hmm. went out and passed resumes out, and uh, <laughs> I walked into the R&D shop, what was the R&D shop at the time, now is the carbon shop at mm -hmm. Hendrick Motorsports, and uh, handed my resume to Gary Dehart, and we talked for 30 minutes, and uh, he said, well, he told me, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, I'm really interested in you, you'll probably mm -hmm. be getting a call back here in the next few days maybe for a second interview. Aww. 
I was on my way back to Atlanta that afternoon, and he calls me on the phone. Hey, we need you to come back Monday morning. Oh, God. So, That's exciting. Yeah. Well, good. You've been here ever since, I'm yes. assuming. Yep. Well, good. All right. Stealth 24, how do you prepare for a race? Um, how do we prepare for a race? Drink we your start amp energy. Drink our amp energy. <laughs> we drink our amp energy. Yeah, yeah, I saw you drinking that earlier. <laughs> Let drink. We get all amped up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Lance, Chris Heroy, and Chris Doherty and I, we, we call ourselves Team Chris, mm -hmm. the three C's. Um, we sit down with Lance and we talk about, you know, we look through the notes of last race, what, Dale, what Dale's complaints were about the car. And we try to look through the other three teams, see if they were complaining about the same thing. Is there anything that they did to fix it? Um, we look at our seven post data, look at our track data, is there anything you know we think, think that might fix it? We come up with a game plan for a setup that weekend, mm -hmm. and then I'll go in the shock room, build the shocks, get the bump stops ready, um, load it on the truck. We usually load the truck uh, Wednesday afternoon because Dave Radney, our truck driver, he's always in a hurry to get out. So, yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, we uh, we usually have Thursdays off before mm -hmm. we fly out to the racetrack. Then Friday morning we get in the track and we see how good the game plan was and <laughs> we go at it. All right, um, Tom Dignan Senior wants to know how much input does the driver have in shock selection and setup. Um, he's got a lot of input. You know, well, um, we will look at his past notes uh -huh. and based off his past input come up with the setup and then we'll run we'll test on the seven post optimize two or three different shock packages run them by the driver and it's mm -hmm. it's his word you know during the race weekend we don't have any data acquisition on the car so his input is all we have to go by so he has a very very big say in what goes on that race car all right um son vgg wants to know what's your favorite 88 paint scheme What's my favorite 88 paint scheme? <laughs> um, gosh, there's been a lot of them. Really, I thought, I really like the AMP paint scheme mm -hmm. and the National Guard paint scheme. I thought a really cool paint scheme was, uh, we ran this year at Charlotte, was uh, Dale Jr.'s, Dale Jr. Foundation paint scheme, uh -huh. JR. It was black, black and gray car, mm -hmm. orange. It was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> something different. Yeah, know. something different than usual. Yeah. And going to Talladega this weekend, sorry. Yeah. We have oh. a really cool uh, Dale Jr. Halloween uh -huh. paint scheme. It's uh, black and yellow. It's a really neat looking car. Got have to go look at definitely it. Definitely check it out. <laughs> I this need weekend. to go look at it before I leave. Yeah. <laughs> Get a picture, put it on my Facebook page, <laughs> give them the inside look. All right, well, um, are, you, well, are you ready for the Amp Energy Juice 500 at Talladega this weekend? I heard Amp Energy partnered with director Terry Gillum to create a short film about this track. You can see the tra trailer at www.legendofhallowdega.com. And uh, do you know about that, or are you just excited for this race? I'm excited for it. Yeah, um, I, I heard there's a uh, short movie gonna uh, mm -hmm. coming out, Legends of Uh-huh. Um, well, we'll have to drive to the track to uh, check that out. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, last. This is the second year now AMP's done something really cool for the fans, the yeah. race teams, and everyone at Talladega. Um, last year, they did a really cool concert that we all enjoyed. Um, a lot of fans there got to chat with the fans, hang out with the fans. That was really cool. Um, this weekend, they're doing a movie, mm -hmm. so so they've really tied the whole Halloween, Talladega yeah. deal really good together, where we really get a chance to spend some opportunity with the fans, and it's been really good. Legendofhalladega.com. So I'm really looking forward to it. Check it out. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. Well, we're midway through the chat. Um, today's Amp Up the 88.com live video chat powered by Amp Energy. I'm Miss Sprint Cup. We're here with Chris Golder, shock specialist. Answering your questions. Make sure you keep sending them in. What you drinking over there? Is that your favorite? This is my favorite Amp yeah. drink. It's the uh, Amp <laughs> Lightning. Mm hmm. It's a. Uh, it's like a lemonade. It's it, it it's like a lemonade. I don't. Maybe it's a southern thing for me, mm -hmm. I don't know, but <laughs> the uh, lemonade is really refreshing, but you know, if you need a little kick to get you going, yeah, I really like it. Amp juice is my favorite. <laughs> I love that stuff. All right, well, back to our questions. Well, this 
What is your favorite amp flavor? Dakota Lover KC. <laughs> so we just answered that one. Go try it, go store. Yeah. It's good stuff. Southern and thing. All, all the flavors are really great. Yeah. I, I really like the new 100% uh, amp energy <laughs> Me <juice>. too. <laughs> Kind of going with a little more healthy route uh -huh. there, but it, it still gets you <laughs> going. Right. You know, it's, it's good for you. Can't go wrong with the amp <laughs> energy. All right. Juice. Beck Beat 555. What's the most difficult track to prepare a shocks package for? What's the most difficult track? Um, that's really, you know, it's changed throughout the years, especially with the COT car. Bristol's a very tough one where shocks are very influential on the car's handling. Um, driver really wants a lot of feel there. Mm -hmm. Bristol's a tough one. Daytona, um, the track has really gotten rough for the last few years, and so the shocks have become really important there. Um, that, that, that's been a really tough one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but now they've repaved it, so, yeah. so hopefully we're going, we're going to get to go down there for a winter test before the race. And I, I'm predicting it's going to take a totally different shock oh, package God. at Daytona than what you're than used to. Yes. All right. Um, Sun VGG, have you ever had one blow apart or something like that? Uh oh. <laughs> Knock on wood. Luckily, cross my fingers. Cross your fingers. No. <laughs> I don't want to. I almost want to say yes because I don't want to jinx myself there. Uh oh. No. <laughs> Hopefully, you die. Yeah. Knock on wood. We'll get some when we leave here. All right. Tom Dignan Sr., what other duties do you have on the 88 team besides shock specialist? Um, on, uh, during the race, um, I uh, help calculate fuel mileage, and during the pit stop, um, I uh, hand in the uh, new left front tire that's going mm -hmm. on the car, because the uh, tire carrier, when Dale comes in, and assuming it's a four tire standard stop, the uh, right front tire carrier will have the new right front tire in his hand. He'll run around the car, put that on the car, mm -hmm. the old right front tire will come over, we'll catch that and then I will hand him the new left front tire. Okay. And then also, um, we have intercom systems in chat. I can suggest uh, changes to uh, Lance and uh, Chris Heroy um, during the race. Okay. All right, good question. Sun VGG wants to know how much um, do your shocks cost, like estimate? Um, estimate, uh, physically for the part, one shock is about Fourteen hundred dollars. <laughs> now yeah. we have a lot of R and D and research in those, and we do a lot of the machine work mm -hmm. and tweaking on them ourselves. And it's it's tough to put a price on the amount of R and D we do on the seven post. And so, if we were to go maybe say lease a shock, start leasing shocks to other race teams, mm -hmm. that price would definitely be higher. But just to go buy the parts off the shelf for each shock is about fourteen hundred dollars. All right, um, let's see, JK's baby mama. Do you like racing at Talladega? <laughs> I love racing at Talladega, you know. That's, uh, Dale's, that's one of Dale's favorite racetracks. Mm -hmm. He always runs good there, super speedway racing. Um, I really enjoy Talladega. Plus, I'm from Atlanta and it's only two hours from my parents' house, so uh, they usually oh, yeah. come over, my sisters, and uh, get to see the race, get to spend time with them and love the fans at Talladega. Always a lot of fun. There's nothing There's nothing bad about Talladega. I love racing there. I would be terribly upset <laughs> if they lost a race. All right. <laughs> You're gonna like this question. Miss Wendy Golder wants to know of your three sisters, who is your favorite? <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> and what's their I names? I can't believe. Two of them are I, twins. I've got three sisters. I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, 30. I have uh, two sisters. That are 29. They're they're twins. Mm -hmm. Both of them went to UGA. Wendy's one of them. Uh -huh. Meg's the other one. And then we have a baby sister who just got married. E Lena. Uh -huh. Now uh, e Lena Law. Mm -hmm. um, cool husband. Great addition to the family. Mm -hmm. um, who's my favorite? Well, I guess you better say Wendy. <laughs> Wendy, since you were the first one to get the question uh -huh. in. I like all of you equally, <laughs> but I'm leaning towards you right oh, now. Oh, good answer. <laughs> all right. Beck Beat 555. With a restrictor plate track like Dega, what do you have to consider for your shocks package? 
Um, with a restrictor plate track like Dega, um, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, and the restrictor plates really limit the horsepower the motor makes. So if the driver ever has to crack the throttle, um, it's going to take him a long time with that restrictor plate to get the motor wound back up to be able to make another move. So you really have to have a good handling sh set of shocks, which Talladega is such a big racetrack that handling is not a huge role, but also you need a set of shocks that really keep the attitude of the car down so it can cut through the air. Mm -hmm. So to try to overcome that restrictor plate, because okay. the lower you can keep that car, the better it's going to cut through the air and the okay. faster he's going to go and the faster he's going to be able to move from the front to the back or if he's already out front, stay out front. Okay. All right. Um, Megan88, what is your favorite track and why? What's my favorite track? I really like it. Atlanta Motor Speedway. Um, that's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, the track's starting to get some age on it now, so it really takes a lot of thought and input to get a good setup there. Dale usually historically runs good at Atlanta. Um, I really enjoy going there. Again, I get to see my family. Yeah. But two, it's it's a real challenge to get the shock package right. You have to have the damping just right and the bump stops just right and engaging at just the right time to get Dale happy to where he can really go fast. So I really like Atlanta. Atlanta. Vegas is a Vegas is a really cool uh -huh. town to go to, but Yeah. Um <laughs> and then Bristol. Bristol's always yeah. fun because you're right there close to the action. I know. It's so I love the atmosphere at Bristol, but like yeah. you know, Sonoma's one of my favorite yeah. atmospheres, so <laughs> All right, um, Sun VGG. What's the average time to build a shock? Um, the average time from scratch, um, every everything disassembled, to build it and build it correctly is about two and a half hours um, to get it valve put together, valved up. Then we'll run it across the dyno, make sure it's got the valving we want. Sometimes you get lucky and it's good the first mm -hmm. time. Other times. It's a little nitpicky and you got to sit there and tweak a shim or two um, and that can take an extra 30 minutes, an hour. Mm -hmm. um, now at the track sometimes we'll have a shock and we'll want to make a small, small change to it. We have to go internally to the shock. We can do that in 15 minutes, you know, just add or subtract a shim or two, maybe change the, the uh, settings in the piston, mm -hmm. but average from scratch is about two and a half hours. All right. JK's baby mama, do you work out? <laughs> do I work out? <laughs> I used That's to. the question. Used to. I used to in high school, when I played high school football, I used to really enjoy working out. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had more time for it, but no, I can't really say. I uh, play golf and I walk a lot. I've, <laughs> I've actually started walking when uh -huh. I play golf. Because, I mean, it's a definitely a working at a workout especially the hilly courses yeah, we, that we have hills. around here in Charlotte mm -hmm. up and down hills <laughs> um, I wish I had more time to work out but at the present moment weight training wise no I don't <laughs> all right Dale Fan 88 I heard you graduated high school you raced in a pro truck series at Lanyard National Speedway how was that experience Lanier. it Lanier. was great Lanier. um I uh, started off racing go-karts um, when I was 11, mm -hmm. my dad and I started racing go-karts and uh, had a lot of fun. My father and I had a lot, a lot of fun. Um, great racing. We were racing down around Macon, Georgia. Um, asphalt road course. Mm -hmm. Mom hated it. <laughs> because in go-kart racing, like there's not really a cage around you. You're uh -huh. sitting in the go-kart and your head's sticking up and there's not, there's, yeah. there's not like a roll bar nothing yeah, above your head <laughs> so mom saw that the first time and the minute she saw the go-kart she was she didn't like it uh -huh. she was not enthused about the idea so me and my dad we did it for about three years mm -hmm. till, I was till I was about 15 um, and then mom finally got her say mm -hmm. and go-kart racing was over uh, went through high school <laughs> didn't do much racing and then um, when I started college at Georgia Tech, my uh, dad and I decided, he used to uh, build some uh, race cars for people. We decided we were going to go, um, it's a late model truck series. Mm -hmm. It looks very similar to a Craftsman truck, or 
now sorry camping yeah <laughs> camping wheel truck series looks very similar to that it's a fiberglass body uh full roll cage chassis um we started that w w when i started at georgia tech except for me and my dad and i always have to do things the hard way mm -hmm. so instead of just buying one from somebody we're going to build oh. our own because of course we can do it better <laughs> so uh, we built that took us about a year and a half and then i raced that all the way through college uh -huh. oh sorry drop the mic um won't y'all want them to be able to hear you <laughs> i uh raced that all uh -huh. the way through college until i graduated and then when i moved up here um fortunately we sold that uh -huh. but now my brother-in-law is getting Les, into it. Les Law bought it back, and they currently oh. have the truck we built. So, I'm hoping. Are they running it? They are running it. Is it um, doing well. Yeah, Good doing way. well. So, mm -hmm. hopefully, before they stop doing that, I can. I've been getting up thoughts about maybe go driving it again yeah, one time. That'd be cool. Mom's not probably not real happy to hear that. <laughs> but. Oh, all right, lovely KTJ. Do you work with any regressive curbs in your shock absorbers? Um, well, I really don't want to talk about the curves that we run. Oh, yeah. I don't want to give any information <laughs> here away unless the competition is listening in. That's a tricky question. Um, <laughs> we have experimented a little bit with those. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's, they're showing some promise there. Okay. But without getting into too much detail, giving <laughs> information away for uh. the competitors, <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> Good answer. All right. Sun VGG. Um, which is harder to set up, fronts or rears? Um, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, you can influence the handling of the car a lot more with the rear shocks, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, but they're simpler to work with. Mm -hmm. The fronts don't influence the handling quite as much as the rears, but we can influence the attitude of the car, which is a feel thing for Dale. and. Um, so they're very, so they're both very important. The uh, rears are easier to work up, easier to work on. You can adjust the car more with them. Mm -hmm. The fronts are a little more difficult to work on, but they're as they're as if not more important. And okay. now with the bump stops we have on the front shocks, it's made the front shocks that much more mm -hmm. interesting and tougher to work on. So it's it's a toss up. Yeah. There. All right. We're going to take a few more questions. Uh, Sun VG, oh, well, we just took that one. Jake Mover, number 88, what is your dream job? <laughs> Are you doing it? I'm, do I'm, <laughs> I'm, happy, with, I'm happy with what I'm doing, uh -huh. you know. I mean, uh, um, I would like to be, I would like to move up to maybe a, I would definitely like to move up to a race engineer role on a uh, cup team. Um, and see how that goes mm -hmm. and if that goes take the next step but I'm happy with what I'm doing yeah. I'm, I'm I'm very I'm thrilled you know that I'm with one of the best organizations mm -hmm. the best organization in racing and uh, um, I got very lucky out of college yeah and I can't com I'm definitely not complaining with what I'm with what I'm doing Good. now worth leaving in the hotel for two two weeks yeah that, <laughs> that's definitely a tough part of it but. <laughs> all right um, Chris, 44, what do you like to do with your free time? You said what you golf like a little bit. Um, yeah, I've, the last, I started playing golf about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to golf at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Try to practice on the way home from the range. If the wife doesn't have dinner ready, then I'll stop and hit some balls, mm -hmm. practice some putting. But uh, yeah, mainly free time right now is golf, but I think that's all fixing to change with the baby yeah. coming. I'm going to try to play golf and hopefully when he gets to, you know, Aww. be three or four, I can get him out there on the golf course. Yeah, that's we'll exciting. We'll see if he likes it. If, <laughs> if, if he likes yeah. it, then it'll give us something to do together. If not, no. Go build some trucks to race yep. for him. <laughs> we'll like find that. something that he likes, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. Kimmy Form, are you limited by NASCAR to the kinds of shocks you can use? Yes. We are very limited. Um, there's... Um, Four shock manufacturers that are li that are legal to use in NASCAR, and we have to use specific models mm -hmm. that um, they specify, even of those manufacturers. So there's not a there's not really a lot of parts that we can start with to make our shock package mm -hmm. um, shock wise. 
bump stop wise, um, they have a few dimensional rules, but other than that, you can use whatever you want. All I right. mean, so, so shock wise, yeah, we're very limited. Bump stop wise, they've allowed us to be a okay. little creative and we can get parts and materials from anywhere. All right, well, thanks so much for talking with Thank us. You. Thank y'all race fans for uh, hanging for out with us today. Yeah, remember to check back in next week right here on AmpUpThe88.com. We'll be talking with Matt Myers, the 88 rear tire carrier. Go tell him it's not too scary. <laughs> Thanks, guys.